Hello everyone, this is Rob McDougall from Zank Financial here with your weekly economic update. Today is Monday, November 13th, 2023. So last week was very light in terms of actual economic data that was released, and the only exception was the University of Michigan consumer sentiment that came out on Friday. The November level came in at 60.4, significantly below what was expected, which was 63.7 was a consensus, and also below uh, the October level of 63.8. So this is the fourth consecutive decline for this particular measure of consumer sentiment, consumer confidence, and is near the worst level of the year, which we hit in May, which was just under 60. But to us last week, so the um, University of Michigan survey, important, but the most significant data point, we think, um, was actually a treasury auction, which occurred on Thursday, normal course of business. But the U.S. Treasury tried to sell $24 billion of 30-year notes, and that did not go well. Um, they were forced to increase the, uh, the coupon rate for these instruments, and the primary dealers, which are sort of the overflow buyers of these securities, they normally buy 10% of any particular auction. They ended up picking up 25% of this auction. So we point this out only because we've been arguing that the um, challenge for the U.S. Treasury Federal Reserve with all of the, um, the additional monies that have to be raised, both for our current budget deficit plus refunding of our $33 trillion in outstanding debt, is going to put pressure on long-term rates. So we think we're seeing the tip of the spear here in terms of that happening. And as a result of this failed auction or auction that went poorly and a number of other reasons, we do think the Federal Reserve is about at the end of their tightening cycle. So uh, when we take a look at the probabilities that are built in the Fed Fund's future market, they actually went down. And that means the probability of a, a hike for the December 13th meeting went up, still only 14%. But it did go up last week, and in our mind, it actually should have gone the other way. It looks pretty clear to us. It's going to be very surprising if the Federal Reserve uh, tightens uh, further in December. And over the short term, it's going to be very surprising if there's any tightening at all, given the fact that we are seeing a decelerating economy. We'll go through some of the, um, some of the data points that are coming out this week. Um, but it's pretty clear things are slowing uh, in going in the direction the Federal Reserve would like anyway. So we kind of think the Federal Reserve is done in terms of tightening this cycle. Uh, in terms of economic activity, recall that the third quarter was robust. Positive 4.9% GDP growth after uh, first and second quarters both being over 2%. So very strong year-to-date GDP growth through September we definitely do believe we're starting to see that slow. Uh, the Atlanta Federal Reserve, which we quote all the time, almost every week, they actually took their expectations up for fourth quarter GDP uh, a week ago. It was at 1.2%. They revised that to a positive 2.1%. But again, that's coming off a third quarter that was at 4.9%. So they're expecting deceleration. And the Blue Chip Economist Survey um, which I, I would say the Atlanta Federal Reserve has done a better job over the last two years. Nonetheless, uh, economists, if you take the average of the top economists, they expect less than 1% GDP growth here in the fourth quarter, 2023. Uh, last week, again, this is uh, a data point in the positive direction for the Fed to possibly um, pull off from any future hikes is the inflation expectations. We always look at the 10-year break-even, 10-year Treasury minus 10-year Treasury inflation-protected securities. Last week, that actually fell nicely, uh, and it's at a level that seems very reasonable and low. It's at 2.33%. So that's investors betting. That's the expectation of embedded inflation over the next 10 years. So, uh, very light economic last week uh, with all that, plus the auction that didn't go so well. How did the markets fare? Actually, the S&P 500 was up pretty strongly last week. The rest equities mixed too weak. So last week, uh, the S&P 500 up another 1.35%. 
So on a year-to-date basis, S&P 500 is up 16.6%. Now, we've talked about the fact that the breadth in the market has been very poor. So the very large market cap names, mega cap names, mega cap growth names have done extremely well. and The rest of the market has done nothing. And to underscore that, again, year-to-date, the S&P 500 up 16.6%, but the equally weighted S&P 500 uh, is actually only up 1%. So again, just pointing out the fact that the top end market, high market cap names have done well this year, the rest of the market, not so much. So last week, uh, the advance in the S&P 500, again, up 1.35%, was really led again by large cap. It was also led by growth. And then when we juxtapose that against international, and this is a very common theme uh, for 2023, S&P 500, solid week, international, flat to down. So actually, the MSCI World developed markets were down 1% last week, and the MSCI Emerging Market Index was flat for the week, despite the fact that China, again, was down. They were down 1.33%. On a year-to-date basis, China down 12.1%. Again, juxtapose that versus the S&P 500, plus 166 So last week, I mentioned the fact that the 30-year auction didn't go well uh, on Thursday. In total, interest rates pushed up last week. We had the two-year yield up 19 basis points, the 10-year yield up 7 basis points. As a result, the Bloomberg U.S. Aggregate Bond Index was down, not as bad as I might have thought, was down 30 basis points, and for the year now, it's down 80 basis points. Uh, The other part of that last week, uh, long-term governments actually, despite the fact 10-year was up 7 basis points, um, was actually up nearly 30 basis points. So let's just say fixed income flat to slightly down last week, U.S. equities up, and international equities mixed to down. This week's economic releases. This is going to be a fascinating week. We've got eight different indicators that are going to be released and when we take a look at the fact uh, that we're, we're sort of hoping for slower growth and slower inflation, consensus expectations across the board for these indicators suggest a slowing economy and slowing um, inflation. So tomorrow, Tuesday, we have a CPI and core CPI. The, the CPI itself, not the core, which is less food and energy, the CPI was positive point. in the month of September. The expectation for October is that it's going to, it was was up 0.1%. Big deceleration. We think that metric might have a little bit of upside pressure. We'll see if it comes in at the 0.1. It'd be great if it did. Uh, Core CPI, and then you'll see this with PPI in a moment, but core CPI is expected to come in uh, in October exactly where it was in September, which is a positive 0.3%. On Wednesday, big day, we get retail sales, retail sales, uh, ex-auto. Again, the consumer in the third quarter, we talked about it in real time. During the quarter, consumer was very hot here in the U.S. during the third quarter. And the expectations are the the consumer is cool. Now, we talked about the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index being lower than expected last week and down month over month. Um, The expectation is retail sales have definitely slowed, so we'll get the October numbers. Retail sales in the month of September were a positive 0.7% month over month. That is expected to be down 30 basis points, minus 0.3 for the month of October. And then retail sales ex-auto was also very strong in the month of September. It was positive 0.6. It's expected to be slightly negative, negative 0.1 for the month of October. And then PPI, uh, the Purchasing Price Index, the input for manufacturers for goods, uh, that is also expected to decelerate, not to go negative, but decelerate. So the month of September, it was up 0.5%, half a percent month over month. That's expected to be nearly flat for the month of October, a positive 0.1. And then core PPI is expected to be exactly where it was in September, which is a positive 0.3% month over month. Lastly, on Friday, these probably won't move the market much, but we do get uh, an update on a couple of housing metrics. So housing starts uh, for the month of October are expected to be almost flat, a little bit down 
from the month of September at 1.35 million. And the same holds true for building permits for October. Expected to be come in at about 1.45 million. It was 1.47 million for the month of September. So that's it for a recap of last week and what's coming up this week. Again, we thank you very much for watching and hope to see you again next week. Thank you. Thank you.